Welcome everyone, in this video we will derive the formula to find the focal point of a parabola, a parabolic mirror. Now let me draw the mirror and then I will have a couple of words uh, to, uh, to say about this before we start the derivation. So let's say that we have a coordinate system and this is important that we are using a coordinate system because we want to derive a formula for the parabola as well before finding the focal point. And let's say that we have this parabola here. And I mean, I choose the origin as the lowest point of the parabola. Of course, you could have a parabola like this as well. It wouldn't matter, but I choose to work with positive, uh, positive y values. That's why I'm doing this. Now, I claim that if you have any light beam that is parallel to the axis of the parabola, so parallel to the y-axis axis in this case, if you have any light beam parallel to this, I claim that it will be reflected to one point. It will pass through this focal point. No matter the light that you're sending, maybe you send another one like this, I claim that it will always pass through this point, and I will call that point, let's say it is this point, F, the focal point. Of course, we basically want to find the distance between this point and the origin, which we will call the focal length. And a couple of words here, you might be saying, I mean, this isn't that interesting. We had, we had spherical mirrors as well, and, you know, we had concave, convex mirrors, and in those, I mean, we also had a focal point, so why is this that important? Well, in fact, in those, and if you know the derivation of those, and in fact, I have the derivations of, derivations of those in this channel. You can access those videos from the cards right now and also from the descriptions part. So if you know the derivation for the convex and concave mirror and the, their focal length, you know that th that is based on an approximation that the light is coming from a point that is, you know, close to the, uh, close to the axis of the mirror, okay? That's what you assume. You're assuming that the light beam coming is close to it. But in this case, we don't make that assumption. So in fact, this will, this is, this is basically a more, well, this is a real focal, focal point. Let's say that, okay? I hope this makes sense. In that one, it is just a simplification. We are making assumptions that if the light beam is coming near the, uh, near the, axis of the mirror, we can assume it to always land in the same point after reflection, but that is in fact just an approximation. But for this one, it is correct, and it isn't just correct for, uh, for light beams that are close to the axis. You can have light beams that are away from the axis, but they need to be parallel to the axis, okay? So how do we do this? And by the way, this is called the principal axis, I think. I might be wrong, though. I think it is called that, though, okay? The principal axis, axis of the mirror, I mean the same thing when I say those two words, two, two phrases. So, I mean, I talked a lot, but I think this is useful, useful discussion. That's why I'm taking this much time. So, basically, we want to find the coordinates of this point. And even before that, I will prove to you that if there is a focal point like this, the shape of the mirror that you're dealing with is a parabola. So we will in fact prove it. It's, I mean, at the beginning, I just said that if you have a parabola, it has a focal point. Well, I will prove that that is the case. And then we do the proof actually, it will be very easy to find the coordinates of the focal point. So enough said, let's get started. To make our proof, we will use a concept that is called the wave, wave front. Now the wave front basically says, and this is more complicated, but as far as I know, it is more complicated, but uh, we don't need all the complications here. All we need to know is if we have two light, light beams like this, one is coming uh, downwards from the y-axis and the other is like this, let's say. They are both parallel, of course. And this we can choose this to be the wave front, okay? I mean, you can see why I call it the wave front. They are at the same level and it is perpendicular to the, the wave front is perpendicular to the uh, propagation of the light beam, right? 
this is 90 degrees just like this one and so the thing is and i think this is sometimes called hugens principle hugens principle this is a simplified version of it as far as i know uh, so using that the idea is that the uh, time required for let's say this is light beam one this is light beam two the time required for light beam one to go down and to be reflected back up so it goes down and it is reflected up time required for this is the same for two to go down and be reflected and to return to the same level that we have here okay so Huygens principle the this principle of this idea of wavefront tells us that the uh, both of these light beams will have will take the same time once they start from this point once they leave that point and come back to it okay it takes the same amount of time this is what the principle is telling so using that idea let's do it so we know that the time is equal to the this to the distance you cover divided by your speed which is the speed of light in this case and since i mean we have light beam one and light beam two but they are just numbered differently they are basically the same thing they have the same speed and they have the same time which means that they travel the same distance actually so let's say it like this actually t1 is equal to t2 and this is sometimes also called that the optical paths are the same okay and that is more useful when you have refractive indices when you are dealing with different mediums but just to keep that in mind, this is also sometimes called the principle of equal optical length. Optical path, excuse me. So x1 is equal to x2 then, because the speeds are the same and the, and the time is the same, so the distance covered must be the same. What is the distance for x1? It basically went up and down, so it traveled through a distance of 2f. This should equal. What about x2? Well, if, I mean, if we're trying to find a formula for y, remember, for the function. So this is the height y then, which means that this distance, the first, first part of the journey, it's basically f minus y. Then you have the plus, you have this part. And it will be, you have the x here. So you have the x and you will square it. We are, we are using the Pythagorean theorem, in fact. And the other leg of the right triangle, this right triangle, this part is just, just like we saw a couple of seconds ago. It is f minus y. We square it and take the square root using the Pythagorean theorem. So this and this will simplify. We will have f. And so, and also if we toss this to the other side, we have f plus y equaling the square root business. So why don't we get rid of them? We square both sides and we get rid of the square root. That was the goal. And let's open the parentheses. This is f squared plus 2fy plus y squared equaling x squared plus f squared minus 2fy plus y squared. And here f squares will simplify, y squared will simplify. So we get x squared equals 4fy, which means that y is equal to x squared over 4f. And as you can see, this is in fact a formula for a parabola. So we in fact prove that if there is a focal point for any point on the, uh, on the curve, then this curve should be a parabola. And one, and of course, I mean, never forget this, the light beam is coming parallel to the principal axis. If it is not parallel to the principal axis, there is no such a focal point, okay? And this is it. And you might be asking, well, what about the value of f? Of course, now we can model this as a, as a parabola since we just proved that it should be a parabola. This is ax squared, let's say. a here is the coefficient of x squared, as you can see. And then this, let's write it here. This directly shows us that a should equal should equal one over four f, and so f is equal to one over four a. This is the focal length. So maybe you are given a parabola like 
this and you're told that the formula is, I don't know, 2x squared, immediately the focal point will be 1 over 8. I mean, it will be here, 0, and the x is 0, of course, the x coordinate, and the y coordinate will be 1 over 8. Of course, you need some uh, dimensions as well. I mean, if you're not provided some units, you can't do this problem. So yeah, you are probably given some units if you are asked this in a physics problem. Anyways, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please add them in the comment section. I hope to see you in another video. Until then, take care.